Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Michelle and the channel is called Shell's Bits and Pieces where you'll find a little bit of everything all in one place. Happy Wednesday, you guys. Um, yeah, so it's been um, a very interesting few weeks. Um, as you guys know, I quit my job uh, in February and uh, yeah, I'm doing my thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I just totally lost my train of thought already and we're only... Uh, 30 seconds in. <laughs> That's how we roll, guys. We just go with the flow. Um, so, yeah. So, for today's episode, uh, which today is episode four of Craft and Chat Wednesdays, I thought we would make some cute altered playing cards. And aren't these adorable? Oh, my goodness. I made some. I made these yesterday, and I made this one this morning. And I think this is my new favorite craft to do. Um, for junk journaling, card making, what have you. Um, but I just thought these came out so well. And I thought that this would be a great little craft to do today while we chat and catch up on all of the things that is shell spits and pieces. Things that are shell spits and pieces or things that is shell spits and pieces. Because shell spits and pieces is a thing, but I'm shell. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys, so um, I just want to do a quick shout out to um, all of the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining our community. Uh, we are working towards a goal of um, monetizing this channel and creating a fun, positive, and happy place. And yeah, so this is where it all starts. <laughs> um, I also do want to say thank you to everybody that has commented on my videos, liked, um, hopefully shared the video. Um, just, it's just so great to see um, so many people out there that have knowledge and can help, you know, help me find out information that I may need. Um, one item in particular um, was mentioned uh, in one of my recent videos about a, um, Oh, what was it? It was a Warhammer um, game set of some sort. Uh, this person, and thank you so much for your information. I haven't had a chance to do much research or pull it out of the container that it's in to see, but this person did mention that uh, I could potentially sell it for quite a bit of money if the um, if the packaging inside the beat up box is. Uh, is in good shape. So we'll check that out and we'll talk about that maybe in a future video. But thank you so much for the info. Really appreciate it. I love when um, <clears throat> members of the community reach out and uh, help facilitate um, knowledge because that's what we're all here for is to share and to share knowledge and to help each other out. So that's why I'm here, guys. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I was watching some YouTube videos for inspiration yesterday uh, and found I came upon a YouTuber that was doing altered playing cards and I thought, you know, I could do that. So when I went in my stash to find the playing cards, I was like, hmm, I don't have any real good playing cards that I can use because what I have, um, they have like different things on them. They're not actual cards, you know, just plain playing cards like these. Um, so I decided I would go to the Dollar Tree and see if I could find some playing cards. And I did, I found these. Um, I'm not real happy with these particular cards, but they'll work for this project. Um, they're coated, but they're also pressed. So if you put too much um, moisture, I guess, on them, they do tend to curl. And then I tried to facilitate or move along the heating, the drying process with my heat gun, and then the paper started to kind of bubble. I don't know if you can see that, but the paper behind the card bubbled a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. It's kind of separated from the top. Um, it still works, but um, I think next time if I come across some better playing cards, just generic basic playing cards at the bins, I'll grab those uh, and try again. But these cards, if you'll notice, do have the corners cut. And it says on this box that these cards were used in actual play at this fabulous casino. And I not ever been to Las Vegas, so I don't know what casino this is, but it says it's the Strat, so whatever. But it also says <laughs> that they have trimmed corners. I'll just put that up here so you can see it, maybe. Okay, I'm, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> 
It says, oh my lord. Okay, cards have trimmed corners to ensure against future casino play and may not include jokers. I didn't look to see if there was a joker. I guess it really doesn't matter. But yeah, so these all have the corners cut, which is okay. It kind of adds to the, um, I don't know, the uniqueness of this project, I guess. And if you wanted, you could cut all four, but I did not. I just left them the way they came. So let's just get started. Um, let's see, what would you need to make altered playing cards? Well, you're gonna need some cards. You don't need a full deck. I'm certainly not playing with a full deck. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> I just cracked myself up. Anyway, <laughs> feel free to comment. It's fine. <laughs> so you'll need some cards and you will need um, some gesso. And I have a couple of flavors of gesso today. Uh, yes, I said flavors. Um, I have this one and I have this one. This one I bought at Hobby Lobby. Uh, I think I got it on sale. This one I also got at Hobby Lobby, um, but it was with a set of um, four other mediums. I think that there's a, um, you know what? Let me just pull them out and I'll show you. And I've had these for a little while. Probably two years um, and just have never really used them. But it was a set of Liquitex Basic Acrylic, and it's just different mediums uh, that came in this set. There's gel medium, which is a gloss, and um, this is actually really cool to preserve and put over the top of things if you want like a shiny effect. The iridescent medium, I haven't really played with too much. Um, yeah, I just haven't really had the thought or any ideas to use this with, so I haven't used this. Um, the gesso, which I will demonstrate today, we I have used this, and it's pretty cool. Um, coarse texture medium, I have done a little bit with this one. Um, it, it's just very grainy, and have, it's like it has sand or something in it, I don't know. But it's cool for texture if you wanted to use it for that. And then the modeling paste, which you can see, I've it's pretty flat. I've used this quite a bit. Um, but like I said, I bought this a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, and I think I paid $13 for the set. So that was a pretty good bargain, I think. And I do believe I bought this at Hobby Lobby. So these are, this is the set that it came with. We're not gonna use these other things today, but I will demonstrate the gesso. And I actually, I think I like this gesso better than this one. This one is made by Master's Touch Fine Art Studio, and I think it was made for Hobby Lobby. So it's probably one of their um, one of their brands, but it's okay. Um, I used this yesterday, and this one's a little bit thicker than this one. This one's kind of liquidy. This one's a little pastier, but it's still really pliable, and I like this one better. And it'll be easier to to use to get it out of the tube as opposed to pouring this in a cup and then having a giant mess. And yeah, I'm not feeling the mess today, so <laughs> we'll go over here and. And, and take care of that. So, like I said, you will need some cards, <laughs> some gesso, um, a paintbrush or some kind of applicator so that you can apply your gesso to your cards. Then you'll need embellishments. And oh my goodness, the sky's the limit with this, you guys. You can use small embellishments, big embellishments. You can use buttons, washi tape, stickers, um, ephemera, and that's what we're going to do today is try to use up some of our ephemera. I have got so much Tim Holtz, and also I have um, the Paper Studio, which um, I've kind of mixed and matched on these cards what I used. Um, this violin, or is it a violin or is it a cello? We'll call it a cello because we don't know. <laughs> but this came from a Paper Studio ephemera pack, and then these two items are two. Um, Oh my gosh. <laughs> These two embellishments were a Tim Holtz. Um, I think they came out of snippets, if I'm not mistaken. And then I had a piece of music paper that I had uh, ripped and um, just did some inking on. Uh, so yeah, you can use whatever embellishments you like. Um, if you'd like, you should have some ink or you could have crayons or paint. Um, you do wanna grunge up your your background so we'll work on doing that as well so yeah that's pretty much all you need oh and the most important thing i almost forgot glue you need some glue or some kind of adhesive 
Um, it's not uh, required that you use the products that I use. Um, I'm just making things with what I have. Um, the only thing I did go out and buy were these cards um, for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree plus tax. So it cost me $1.35. Everything else I had. So, yeah. And it was only because, I, the only reason I bought the cards was because I didn't like um, the cards that I have. And you know what? If you'll hang on just a second, I'll go get those cards and show you what I mean. <clears throat> okay, so this was the card deck that I was referring to. And it's a really pretty deck. The only thing is, is it's not, you know, basic like these. Uh, and I'll pull them out and show you. And, um, you know, these will be great for other projects, but this project I really didn't like these for. If you see the, it, it's got a picture, which is cool. Um, and they're all mixed up um, by suit. So the, the spades are this bison. Um, the hearts are the bear, sleepy bear. Turn that around so you can see it. Sleepy bear, he's the sleepy time bear from Celestial Seasonings. And you know, the back all has these. Um, if I wanted to do some kind of Asian or Oriental style of journal or project, these would be perfect for that. But they're not good for this project today. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, oh, there's a wizard. We're not gonna use these and that's why I went and bought um, these and I don't know if you can well I guess it really doesn't matter but these are not um th these have a texture I don't know if you can see that texture or not but these do not have a texture so um yeah there's a, quite a few differences and that's you know one of the reasons why I decided not to use these on this project this time around but maybe down the road we will so How's everybody doing? Um, it's been a very interesting few weeks. Um, as you guys know, I quit my job in February. Just got up and walked away. It was not serving me and I was losing my marbles. Probably already have lost them. <laughs> and uh, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, you know, it's it was a, a very um, stressful situation that I needed to get myself out of. So since then, um, the last couple weeks I've been kind of slacking on um, any Instacart and stuff like that. I actually did some yesterday and I'm probably going to go do some more today. The batches have been kind of low. Um, the pay has been really yucky, for lack of a better term. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's some things that I'm trying to do uh, to survive, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, I am pushing my resale to the, to its, um, to higher levels. Um, I don't know where the limit will be, but I did spend a lot of days last week listing items and I've listed over a hundred things, um, throughout my, my platforms. Um, as you know, I have an Etsy store, I have a Macari store, and I have items listed on eBay. I'm considering doing an eBay store um, just so that the items will just stay there forever and people will always be able to find them because I'm finding that the auctions are just slow. Um, but I have been watching other YouTubers and they've kind of said the same thing that their sales have been slow. And I don't know if they actually have a storefront on eBay or if they're just doing what I'm doing, which is listing items for auction. And then I have a buy it now price. Um, I do know that my prices seem a little higher than they should be. And that's just kind of a gauge for me to see, okay, this is the first week they've been listing. Listed. Are we getting any views, getting any interest? And if I'm not, then I'll probably lower the prices just a little bit. So um, other than that, um, like I said, I've been trying to do in, uh, eBay and uh, Instacart. And um, oh, I went to the bins the other day. So I will have a haul video coming up for you on that. Um, yeah, it was Monday I went and um, the crowd was the usual. Uh, same people that are always there. And I think that they are all... Um, full-time full -time resellers as well and uh, you know they all just look tired and, and, and wrecked just like everybody else so I don't know if they're not finding things to sell I mean I did find some stuff and uh, I did spend $20 but um, I think that was $20 well spent and you'll see in that video um, what we found and, and what we're gonna do with it so how about we get to some crafting, you guys? I'm just rambling on with my less than a full deck. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so to get started, um, 
People have quite a few different techniques that I've seen to uh, make the altered playing cards. Um, you, if you don't have gesso, don't worry. There is another method that you can use to um, get your glue to stick. And the reason why we use gesso is because these cards have a coating on them and it's very slick. So the glue may not stick well or any ink as well because if you're trying to ink this, the ink will come off and I'll show you. Let's just use our vintage photo because we love vintage photo. I think this is the most used ink color in any of the distress inks that you know, I, I know about or have. Um, and I say that not just me, but I think everybody uses vintage photo for stuff. And um, yeah, so it's a very popular color. Um, so I'm just gonna ink right here in the middle of this heart, right there in the middle. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a comparison. So this one, right? It looks very grungy and I just, I love how this came out. Um, but when you touch it, the ink doesn't really come off, okay? Because I've got gesso on here, which is um, a medium to like primer, I guess would be a good way to say it. It's like a primer for your um, for your other stuff so that it kind of will hold it. And there are some spots that I did kind of sand off with my emery board to give it a little bit of character and depth. You know, you want some interest. Um, so yeah, gesso is used on canvases for artists mainly um, as a primer for their canvas. But this, you can see it's shiny, right? See that shiny? Oh, and there's that texture I was talking about. But when you go like that, it comes off on your fingers. Can you see that? Where I rubbed it off? Yeah, so I mean, it, it may stay a little bit, but it's not gonna stay long. And if your hands are wet, which um, I guess I should mention again that this distressed ink, distress ink is water reactive. So if water gets on it, it will definitely just wipe right off. So we don't want that. So we're gonna gesso our cards. Um, I've done some for you, but I'll show you how to gesso. And let me grab a piece of paper to put under here. Talk amongst yourselves. I stole that from Gail Agostinelli. She is the funnest um, crafter that I've watched. She's just um, bubbly and excited about everything she does. And, uh, and she's a really cool chick. I like her. But uh, yeah, when she has to walk away or step away from her table, she always says, talk amongst yourselves. So thanks, Gail. I stole your line. <laughs> At least I gave you credit, so, you know, there's that. So what we want to do then, we won't use this one, we'll use this one, is get your, get your card and your gesso. Oh, I started to say that you don't necessarily need gesso, um, and if you don't have it, don't run out and go get it. What you can do is you can take some sandpaper or a sanding block um, or an emery board for props, purposes and you can just rough up the surface and by roughing up the surface it will give you um, a little bit better of a place to um, I like that <laughs> it'll it'll make your surface less slick and uh, you should be able to stick stuff to it and the ink should adhere better, but oh my lord, I like that. Oh guys, I think we're gonna use this one. By number two, number three is where it's at. All right, so let's just rough this up, but we're still gonna do the gesso. That's one of the things that I don't find um, I have strength in. Um, I'm a perfectionist and it makes it difficult to do things sometimes because I gotta have the right balance of color texture, size, placement. I'm just, I'm too much of a perfectionist and sometimes that gets in the way of my crafting, but I'm trying. I really am trying hard to, you know, get out of that mindset because crafting is not a perfect science. It's, uh, it's supposed to be fun and relaxing and enjoy, you're supposed to enjoy it. So we're gonna do that. So <laughs> if you take like a sandpaper, now this is not a great example because my emery board is not um, a coarse sanding implement it's an emery board 
So, but anyway, you get the picture. You can just rough up the surface so that that way it helps to uh, create less of a shiny, slick area and will help you with your inking, gluing, painting, staining, whatever it is you want to do. All right, so we have our card after all of that. <clears throat> I'm just going to shake this up a little bit. Um, I can't believe that I've had these for a couple of years. Um, when I was working full time, which I mean, and I was working full time, I was working 10 hour days, Monday through Friday and an hour commute each way. So I was gone 12 hours a day. It was very difficult for me to find time or the energy or the motivation to sit down and do craft projects. And, you know, crafting is something that I have loved for as long as I can remember. I've been crafting since the nineties, like real crafting. Um, and I used to make a lot of um, gifts and things for family and friends. Uh, and then I just kind of started working all the time and kind of lost touch with who I was. So I'm coming back down to earth and I'm getting back to my roots. And this is one of the things I absolutely love doing. So I don't want to make this a chore. I want it to be fun. So with that, let's get to gessoing. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and we'll get our gesso out. And there's also... Um, other things you can do as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I do have my coffee. Coffee in hand. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, I drink my coffee. Black and strong. I'm not going to say the rest. <laughs> but yes, I drink black coffee. I've been drinking my coffee black um, for at least 25 years, if not longer. And I'll tell you why I switched from coffee with cream and sugar to just black coffee. Um, years ago when I was a kid, I remember my mom and my grandmother both drank their coffee black. And I was like, ew, that's gross. Why would you do that? And then my uncle, he would put half and half in his, but no sugar. And as I got older and learned about coffee, I think I had my first cup of coffee when I was about 15. And I had, I had gotten it from a convenience store. Oh gosh, I'm having a memory. Um, I was with my boyfriend who eventually ended up being my husband. And then eventually we are now divorced. So it was a long, long time ago. But um, yeah, my boyfriend and I had gone to the little convenience store that was, you know, a few blocks from our house. And uh, we got coffee and Danish and went for a walk. And it was in the morning. Um, I think it was on a weekend, if I, don't rem if I remember correctly. And now, mind you, sometimes my memory is terrible. Actually, I'm not going to lie. My memory is always terrible. But I don't know why sometimes I can vividly remember things that happened so many years ago. And I'm talking, we're going back 40 years. <laughs> a long time ago. But we walked to the convenience store and I got a cup of coffee and I put cream and sugar in it and had an apple danish, if I remember that. Yeah, I think it was an apple danish because I love apple danishes. And... Um, it was the best thing I ever had in my life. So from then on, I started drinking coffee. Um, and it wasn't until I was probably in my late 20s that I decided that cream and sugar was too much of a hassle for me. I couldn't get the formula exactly right every single time and I'd have to adjust it, you know, adjust it with a little bit more cream, a little bit more sugar, a little less, but you know, so on and so forth. And it just got to be too much. So I just decided that I was going to start drinking my coffee black and here we are. I still drink it black. Um, every now and then I will say I'll go to Starbucks and I'll get um, one of their cool little whatevers. Um, I think I get the um, cafe mocha with a double shot of espresso sometimes a triple shot if I'm really feeling down. Um, and those are really good. Yeah, my son's girlfriend um, a few weeks ago had brought me a Starbucks, which was very thoughtful of her. And um, she actually brought me the drink that I get unknowingly that she didn't know that I liked the cafe mocha, um, but she did get it in decaf, which was fine because it was later in the day and I didn't need to be awake all night <laughs> for sure. So, you know, I just, I love how thoughtful she is. She's really, really nice lady. Um, and I love her kids too. They're just great. So anyway, moving right along, let's get this project going because I got things to do today. All right. So we are going to, oh, 
my brain just kind of blah. There's also um, other things that you can do to make your surface not so slick. You could take um, the white part of your paper napkins and you could put it down with Mod Podge. That would help as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things and there's other videos out there that'll kind of go a little bit more into detail with the different techniques. But today I just want to make the craft. So let's, let's do that. And of course Spike, he's out there borking at the that's what we call it, borking, B-O-R-K-I-N-G. He's out there borking at the birds because it's spring. <laughs> and they're out there just chirping away and having a good old time. <coughs> All right. So I just, <laughs> earlier today, um, I was gessoing some cards. And I've got about 10 of them sitting over there that have gesso on them. And the reason being is when I squeezed out the tube, I had a big old blob of gesso that I didn't want to waste. So I have a whole bunch of pre-gessoed playing cards for future altering projects. <laughs> so today, we're only going to use a little. We're going to try to do it in smaller increments because it does come out pretty quick. Um, and you just basically just brush it on and let it dry. It's really not that difficult. And if if you wanted to do an, other, a double coat, you certainly could. Um, you can see how it covers it really nicely. And all that's going to do is give us a little bit of a better surface to ink on and glue on and it also mutes out the card a little bit and you don't have to be neat oh, see there was that that ink it's okay because we don't know what we're going to do with this one and they're always nice to have on hand especially when you're um you know pre-making things to put in journals um, and I think that we're going to end up with a pretty awesome journal at some point in time because I'm making all kinds of stuff and I just haven't done anything with it. Um, I don't know if you guys have been watching me since like um, September and October when I was doing the Halloween projects. I have some pretty cool projects that I made using um, some Tim Holtz products. Um, I learned how to use the Distress Mica Sprays. Oh my gosh, those on photo paper make the best metallic looking backgrounds and if you haven't checked out any of my other videos I've got quite a few um, in my collection that you could go and check out if you're interested. Um, I love making backgrounds but then I don't use them for anything so we've got to change that. You guys we got to change the way we think. Um, I forgot to get a water container to wash my brush so I'm got, I've got to go wash my brush. I'll be right back. Okay, so <laughs> my brush is now clean. Um, I didn't choose any, really any ephemera to make our card today, so I think we're just going to wing it um, and see what we like. I actually did have an idea for this one, and this one is dry. Um, it's weird, though, because as, you know, when it's wet, it tends to curl, so you just have to kind of set it aside. Um, I've got mine over here by an open window. And they just kind of changed from curving this way to curving this way. You can kind of see. But they'll eventually flatten out. Um, and you can bend them a little bit too. But I saw this one with the word B on it. And I thought, you know, maybe we could do something with bees. Because I do have some bee stuff. So let's just take a look and see. Um, I think I pulled a bee out of my ephemera stuff last night. Uh, now I have to find him. Ah, here he is. How about if we work with this as our focal point or as our, um, our inspiration? <laughs> so what we want to do, we have our gessoed card. Um, you could go over it again if you wanted um, to do a second coat. Um, that's perfectly fine. Really, a second coat won't hurt much. It'll add a little bit more um, intensity to um, some areas and less to others. Uh, it just depends on how much you want to show through, really. So we're going to use this one. I think I only went over it once, and it does feel a little textured. Um, let's see if you can see... I don't know if it picks up on camera really well, but there are some spots that are a little heavier, others that are lighter. Got some stuff over here on the edge. Um, yeah, so gesso is a pretty cool medium, um, but it will, um, let me show you on a different one. If you, want it, if you want to scratch it off, it does scratch off. So, you know, you gotta decide 
you know, if you're going to have this as something that's going to be handled a lot or if it's um, just going to be stationary as just a, a pretty in the journal. Um, I think that you could probably go over this gesso with um, like a Mod Podge or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't done it just to make it a little bit more permanent, but it does scratch off if you scratch it off, at least on the surface of these cards. I don't know about other cards, but these, that's, that does happen and it's okay. Alrighty, so what I want to do now is I want to decide what, um, what color ink I want to grunge this up with. And for these, I used the coloring in the main focal piece as my guide. Um, this has um, Rustic Wilderness and Vintage Photo. <laughs> this one has Vintage Photo, Wild Honey, and um, Rusty Hinge. Um, I did notice that the Rusty Hinge and the Wild Honey have some yellow hues to them. So, and if you and you can kind of see that here, which I was hoping it would be a little bit more. Um, Oh, I guess more colored like this, but the yellow came out, so I did go over it a little bit more with the vintage photo, um, just to kind of give it a little bit more depth. This one I used vintage photo and um, weathered wood, because the weathered wood kind of matched this. Um, I really like how this came out. It's just very Victorian and pretty and... I don't know if it looks like a funeral home or not, but I thought it was pretty. <laughs> um, but I think of all of them so far, this one's my favorite. So let's just jump right in. Um, what is gonna go good with the bee? Um, I don't know. So I do have this ephemera pack from the Paper Studio, which is a Hobby Lobby brand. Um, and I have this one too. Um, and I'm just trying to decide if one of these um, sets would be good to go with my B. Um, yeah, let, let's go through this one and see what we can find um, while we're thinking because we need to find something to choose as a main color element um, for our background. So I think I'm just going to dump it out and go through it and see what we can find. Um, and I'll try to do it in short order. Oop, you know what? I think I just had an idea. Okay, being nice and neat's not going to work. Dump it out. <laughs> I try really hard to be careful and nice and neat and stuff, and sometimes it just doesn't work out for me. There's books. That would be good for bookworm. I don't know. Let's just see if we can find something that will go good with this little bee. And, you know, there might not be anything in here. That's a little much. I kind of like these. The only thing is though, I'd have to cut them. Oh yeah, I think we found it. Now we just have to decide which end. I kind of like this from here over. So we're gonna cut this down. Okay, so let's get to starting on the background. So these colors, are really nice. They're vintagey, grungy. We just have to decide which one is going to be the best color profile for our background. And we've got the B Hill match really nicely. Uh, it looks like there's some gold, some blue, some tan. I don't know. Let's see. We've got a lot of choices when it comes to ink. So, because I've been stocking up, I didn't realize this was going to happen that I was just going to be fed up one day and walk out of my job. But I guess I was sub subconsciously preparing for <laughs> for my departure. I don't know. I, uh, I I just I couldn't take it anymore. And sometimes you have to learn when to. It's like it's like that Kenny Rogers song. Got to know when to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away, when to run. <laughs> right? I did. I knew when to walk away, and I think I ran. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was. It wasn't pretty, but anyway. All right, so I think we're gonna try some of these red colors along with vintage photos. So we've got fired brick, we've got crackling campfire, and we've got vintage photo. 
So now I have to find, and I don't know if you guys have seen my ink container, but this is my ink container. And what I've done is I've taken my little, um, little doohickey thingies. What are they called? Ink blending sponges for these little mini ink blenders. And I just, the color, I just pop back in where the colors are. That way I always have access to it, like the green one. And they just come off with Velcro. I got these at Hobby Lobby as well. I think I got them on sale. Um, yeah, so I like these. These are great. They're, um, Tim Holtz does have uh, some of these in his line, but his are always a lot more money than um, than the ones I find that are made by the stores. Um, and this is just as good. Um, I don't use it enough to say it's good or bad quality, and I don't have a Tim Holtz one to compare it to, but I do like it, and they're domed. I don't know if you can see that, rather than flat. I do have the flat style in a bigger one, and I just, I don't know. I don't like them as much. These domed ends seem to catch the edges of the paper a little bit better, and this works better on smaller items. This is good for big stuff, but these are really good for smaller things. And since we're working with smalls today, that's what we're going to do. And I have two. I always keep this one on because I always use this one. So this one will probably never get taken off. <laughs> but I don't have one in the reds yet. So we'll pull an amp up. We'll pull a blank. And uh, these are $2.99 if you get them regular price, which is not bad. And I think there's one too. There's like 10 in here. Um, and they're called Rounded Ink Blending Foam Refills. And the diameter is 1.97 centimeters. So it's not quite two centimeters in diameter. So it's little. All right, so now I think those colors will work, don't you? I mean, there's some red hues and stuff and we want it to be cool. Um, so yeah, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna go for it. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll start with Crackling Campfire. And if you wanna see what color you're gonna end up with, um, you can just kinda go like that and see if that's something you want. Uh, we'll do that with the fire brick too. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. I like these. Okay, so we'll start with the lighter one because you can go dark over light, but you can't go light over dark. So we'll start with the lighter one and we'll just kind of random. We're going to do this randomly and I'm going to pull this in as close as I can. Oh, wrong way. There we go. All right, stay. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to my dog. I did have to put him outside. He was having such a good time barking, I thought he could just go out and bark with the birds because they're cool. So now this isn't terrible. Okay. And it's, this one is Crackling Campfire. Oh my gosh. Um, my, my kids are going to build me a fire pit in the yard probably a little bit later on in the year. Um, only because my one son had to change jobs. So he doesn't have a lot of time right now. And we need more materials and stuff, but we're going to build a fire pit in the backyard. And I'm really looking forward to that because I haven't had a fire pit in a long time. I thought about buying one, but we had all those rocks. You guys remember the rocks, right? We had all those rocks and we did separate the good ones from the garbage. Finally got rid of the garbage. Yeah, we can go around this with the red. We'll probably do, I don't know, what do you guys think? Might be too much. Or it might be just right. We'll get there. So yeah, what we saved the good rocks, um, and there's a lot of them, and we want to build a nice fire pit with like a little sitting area in the yard. Um, the yard is pretty much a blank canvas right now. It has a lot of potential, and it's decent sized for the neighborhood I live in. Um, most of the people in this area, their yards are quite small. Um, yeah, and they don't... Uh, they don't have as much room as I do. I was very fortunate when I bought my house to get the property that I did um, for the price that I got it for. Oh, now that's nice. So what I did here was I went around it with the fired brick and it's just a little too pink for me. So at the I'm going back over it now with the, um, with the crackling campfire and I'm getting a different color tone all together and I really like that. I really like that. So we'll keep doing that and then we'll kind of go over the top with vintage photo just to give it some some grunge effect. 
like that. Yeah, I like that. And I like that it says the word B and it has um, just some additional interest. So you don't have to cover the whole thing with, with ephemera or pictures or anything like that. All right, so let's take a look at our vintage photo. And I have two of them. That's, they're stacked. The old one is on the top. The new, what, am I lying to you? Yeah, the old one's on the top. It's still good. And the new one's on the bottom. I had bought a new one, a new set, because I thought that they were drying up, but they're, they're not. They're okay. All right, so we're just gonna continue our grunging. And you see how it looks just dirty and old and icky? That's what we want. We want dirty, old, and icky, or grungy. <laughs> and you can leave white spaces or light spaces. Just do whatever you feel you want. Um, it's your project, uh, and nobody can tell you otherwise. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna go around the edge. And I know this is a lot of ink, um, but I wanna create kind of um, a muted background effect of color. And uh, so yeah, this is, it's called playing with your stuff and you know, just being creative, nothing wrong with being creative. And if you wanted like a darker outer edge, which we may try, you could go with a darker color like walnut stain. Um, I even have black soot um, or gathered twigs. I think walnut stain. Gathered twigs is a, it's a brown, but it, it comes out really light. So we're gonna try walnut stain. And we can use the same one that we use for vintage photo. It's the same color family, so it doesn't hurt it any. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, I don't know if you can see that but along the top edge, just got just that little extra bit of grunge. And there's a bird looking at me through the window. Hello, birdie. Happy spring to you too. Yeah, add that extra grunge and it just, yeah, it does something to my soul. It really does. <clears throat> so I hope you guys have been having, been having, oh my God, I hope you guys have been having a good week. Um, my channel is picking up. I, like I said earlier, um, I do have some new subscribers and I would like to thank you guys for joining our fun, positive, and happy group. Um, yeah, and uh, if there's anything that you guys would like for me to go over or share with you, or if there's a, a thrift store you'd like me to visit, let me know. You know, I'm open to anything. I don't have anything to do during the day. <laughs> Actually, that's not true, but... Um, I do get to pick and choose what I want to do now throughout the day, and I just threw my gesso on the floor. It's okay. It's not open. It'll be fine. All right. So we've got our background pretty well grunged. I like it. I like it a lot. Let me turn it on so you can see it, because for some reason I'm always upside down, and it's just the way it is. All right, so this now, this is going to be our main image. I wanted the B to be, but the B is not big enough to be. The main image so we're going to use these books um, and I just need to decide if I want to trim them here or there um, we can and you know placement also like I said before I'm a perfectionist and I have to have balance in my life so I always place things with you know balance in mind and you can see from these that they're all very well balanced for the most part, um, even though I'm not well balanced. But like I said, I'm not playing with a full deck. <laughs> that is never going to get old. <laughs> so you want to find your your happy or what you like. And you know, if you're going to do other stuff, you know, with the, I mean, I don't know. No, I think we're going to go with the with up to here. I think. We'll give it a shot and we'll see. And we will, that's what's great about these ephemera pieces too. You can trim them down and no one will ever know that they weren't that piece. And just play around with placement. Um, we also need to find um, something little, like a little thing for interest. Um, so I've got, I, I separated my ephemera last night because I was just in a funk, you know, I just had a really, um, just a, 
not a great day and it wasn't anything anybody did or didn't do it was just all me in my head and uh, so I decided to sit down and start my ephemera so this ephemera on this side is from the um, I don't even know let me look let me grab the, let me grab the packaging so these were from field note snippets from here over and then these from here this way were from Curator. So I've got all these little bits of things that we can add to our project. And uh, yeah, um, I thought it would be a good idea to do it like this because taking them out of the packages is arduous. And then you got all these little tiny pieces that you have, that you have to pick out and pick back up and it's just, it's too much for me, so. That's what I did. Um, yeah, so yesterday I was feeling a little down. Um, Instacart was really slow and it was already too late in the day to go do any bins um, sourcing. So I just decided um, I did as much Instacart as I could take. Um, made about $88, it wasn't a lot. My normal daily goal for Instacart is $200. And since I quit my job, I have not made that goal, not one time. I've been close, I've been close. I've been to like 180 in a day. Um, but Instacart is a hard job. It's very physically demanding. Um, it's mentally challenging for sure because you have to do many things at once. You, it's, it's a lot, but you know, it, it's good exercise. That's for sure because you know, you're constantly kneeling and squatting and bending and grabbing and you're walking and you know, they, they have metrics to, you know, determine if you're a good shopper or a bad shopper, if you're a fast shopper, if you're an accurate shopper and you know, all these things combined. And then you got to drive around and know your way around your town so that you can deliver your stuff efficiently and properly. <laughs> so yeah, it's not a, it's not a job for the week at heart, but if you're interested, let me know. I can send you a referral link. And, um, in some cities they do have, uh, waiting lists. So you have to be aware of that. Um, I got in very early, um, well, maybe not very early, but I got in like five years ago. Almost No, six years ago. It was 2018. So five and a half years ago, um, I joined and I got right in, but it was at a time when it hadn't been popularized as much. And I had lost the job that I had um, because they couldn't afford to keep me because they were bad at financial management, but that's another story entirely. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I got into Instacart and I did that for about nine months and then um, found another job. But yeah, things were, they were different and it was, it was very um, hard for me to, um, to realize that my career at that point in time was over. And it wasn't because of anything I did or didn't do. It was just because I moved to a different state, expected that I would be able to continue working as I had at my prior job. And I was working for a nonprofit <laughs> anyway. All right, so let's find some more elements to give this a little bit of um, interest. I mean, the bee is cute. I really like the bee. And he can probably sit on the books, maybe. What do you got going on here? And I'm sorry if this video is a little long. I'm, I'm long-winded today, guys. I can't help it. So because we have a cool shape and we have some straight lines, I'm thinking a circle of some sort or some kind of um, other shape, uh, but we don't wanna cover up the word B. I like the word B here. Uh, let's see. And I'm not a designer by any means. I don't have any formal training in design, um, but I do like color and I like texture and I like balance. I'm a wacko. <laughs> um, and we don't want to spend a lot of time looking for something. So let's find something that'll kind of go. And this, I think, I like this. Maybe. And I like to tuck things behind or you know, stuff like that. I don't know, what do you guys think? Maybe we could do something up here. I've got this. I don't know. Do you guys like that? I don't think I do. But I could put this down here. I like it. Okay, this is where we're going, you guys. So now we just have to decide um, do we want to go up high?
Hmm. We might need another element. Let's let's get some of this stuff glued down first and we'll, we'll decide from there because it's not gonna be perfect. And I've got a video playing in the background over here. Um, it's uh, Harry Tornado. Let me tell you about Harry Tornado. His name is Josh and I forgot, I think his wife's name is Kaylee. Um, they've been resellers for a few years now, I think four or five years. And I started watching them about the same time as I started doing Instacart. And I also just thought that, you know, resale would be um, something I wanted to do on a more full-time basis, although I never, at that time, never had the time, um, or when I did have the time, I didn't use it properly. But we did um, have, during COVID, sorry, my, nail, my hands are stiff today. <laughs> during COVID, um, we did have um, a lockdown. And when I was working, um, during that time from like March until June, we didn't work in the in at, at our office. We worked from home, so it was Zoom meetings and projects and reports and things. But oh, there goes Spike. He found something to bark at. We um, we were working from home. We got paid for forty hour weeks and probably worked three hours a week, if that. Sometimes five, but that gave me a lot of time to go. Um, pursue other interests while I was still getting paid. It was the best deal ever. And um, my dog's looking at, looking through me, looking at me through the window now. <laughs> He's like, hey, what you doing? He's so cute. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys have seen Spike, but he is adorable. I do have a short video where he's howling at, um, howling along with some sirens. That's just a hoot. He's funny. <laughs> but anyway, during COVID, uh, we weren't working in the office, like I said. So I had a lot of time on my hands to go and pursue other interests. So what I did was I went to the bins almost every single day, but the bins were limited. Um, they would only allow you to be in there in, at, you know, in two hour intervals. You could go and spend two hours and then you'd have to leave. Um, and they had it, um, a pretty decent system of managing how that worked. Um, they had taken, I got too much glue on this. They would mark, they marked all the carts with numbers and they would take down your number and uh, they would give you a countdown like 15 minutes before you had to go because there was a line outside and the line outside was always long and I did wait in that line a few times for a couple of hours to get in the bins, I'm not going to lie, but um, it was just to help manage um, the number of people in the store, minimize contamination. You had to wear a mask, you had to wear gloves. At each bin, were, you could only have one person looking through a bin at a time. So if you were in line to look at that bin and you were the first one, you got the best picks. And I will tell you guys something, it's a secret. I found so much fabulous stuff in those bins during that time. Um, I just, it was phenomenal and uh, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> All I have to say is it was good times. But then when they lifted the COVID curse and uh, made it so that, um, you know, the bins were occupied by more than one person, and it went back to kind of, yeah, but it's okay. Because for three months, I was golden. I found the best stuff. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I really, I cleaned up on that place. But, you know. At that point in time, I probably should have put a little bit more energy into actually building my resale business because now I'm having a little bit of, not trouble, it's just it's everybody wants to do it now. My son was telling me a couple of weeks ago that um, he's seeing trends where, and maybe he even saw where somebody had mentioned this, but content creation is now the new nine to five. So between content creation, reselling, and you know, Shopify, I guess, is a new thing that people are doing. Um, I haven't looked into it yet, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so enough about that. I'm not sure how I like this. Um, as you can see, some of my gesso has kind of come off and it is pretty grungy. Maybe if we add a little bit of an element up here, I'm not sure what, um, but I do remember from years ago, 
when I got my first job. I worked at a Baskin Robbins in Florida and um, I begged this lady for this job. I don't know if I've told you guys this story or not, <laughs> but she, um, she finally hired me after I turned 15. And uh, she, um, she gave me opportunities, which I guess I wasn't ready for because I was only 15. Um, she had me decorating cakes and uh, it was my first attempt at decorating cakes. She's like, oh, could you decorate this cake? And I'm like, yeah, I could decorate this cake. I can do anything, just let me do it. Well, <laughs> they wanted a punk rock cake. Somebody ordered a, a punk rock cake. Now mind you, this was in the 80s, the 1980s, and punk rock was like getting big. Um, so I did a side profile face of a guy with a weird multicolored mohawk, and um, my boss hated it. <laughs> <laughs> so the next time she gave me a task to um, to make a cake, she's like, you know, make this cake. They want flowers and, you know, they want this and they want that. And I was like, okay, sure, no problem. So again, I made it look like a funeral home or something is what she said. <laughs> too many flowers, too whatever. So... I was 15. I didn't know how to decorate cakes. I was just kind of fake it till you make it kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it didn't turn out great. So they didn't let me decorate cakes anymore. But years later, I did um, I did take a class. Actually, I took three classes. It was okay. I don't know what I was talking about, but my camera just decided that it was done filming. So <laughs> I don't know where we left off. Um, but anyway, I was talking about when I was 15. I was working in a Baskin Robbins and decorating cakes and stuff. And anyway, the moral of the story is um, I learned from my mistakes in cake decorating that less is more because I had overdone so many um, elements to those cakes that I was decorating. And I don't know if we missed any of that. But anyway, um, I was thinking because less is more, this could be considered done. But I feel like it needs a little something up here and I'm not sure what I would put there. Um, I know that there's YouTubers, um, other crafters that might put like maybe some stickles or a sticker, but you know what? I think we're going to call this one done because like I said, less is more and we don't want to overdo it. And it does have that grungy vintagey look and, uh, yeah. So I think that today this is done. <laughs> So I don't know, you guys, do you like these um, these projects? I think they're kind of neat. And it's fun because, you know, it's more using your imagination than anything. And they're not going to be perfect. I like, I like to think that they're perfectly imperfect because, you know, they do have some grunge and they do have some scratches to make them look like they've been around the block a little bit. And uh, I don't know. I like them. I, I think they turned out cute. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I know I did. And let me pull this down a little bit so you can get all of them in the frame with my messy mat. Um, you can tell I've been crafting and I didn't clean it off, but this will actually come right off. This is a silk hat mat. Nothing really sticks to it, so you can wipe this off even though it's dry. So with that, I think that our project is finished for today. Um, and you can use whatever you have. Don't limit yourself to what you see here. Use your imagination. Um, you can use paper napkins as a background. You could use um, stickers, washi tape. There's so many options. Um, I didn't do today what I did here, but you could use music paper or other scrapbook paper in little strips. Um, and I am still thinking about that project um, where we would do um, clusters. I'm not a fan of clusters. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I've never made any, but I think in a future video we'll try our hand at clusters. I'm just not ready for that yet. Um, it's because of my perfectionism, my balanced nature. I can't just throw something together and expect that it's going to look great, and that's just me. It has nothing to do with anybody else, so I don't know. But anyway, with that, you guys, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate um, you taking the time out of your busy schedules to spend some time with me and have a few laughs. Um, like I said before, this is a channel of happiness, positivity, and fun, and barking dogs and chirping birds in the background. <laughs> so you guys, thank you again. I really appreciate you. There's Spike at the window. I'm probably going to have to let him in and, uh, 
get on with the rest of my day. But thanks so much for watching. And if you are new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also like the video, make a comment. Let me know if you love it, if you hate it. I'm open to all of it. I would really appreciate um, your feedback. And if, uh, if you have not, please consider subscribing. If I said that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got a video going on in the background, the birds and the dog, and oh my lord. But anyway, we're going to end this right here. Thanks so much, you guys. Come back and see me on the next one, and we'll see you later. Have a good day.